thank you for the introduction. Uh, so my name is Jeff. Um, I'm going to talk about Flowspec, which is a uh, declarative specification language for data flow analysis. And this is joint work with Ilko Visser. So if we look at just um, a simple pipeline that's of a compiler, we have the program source, which is parsed. There's some name and type analysis, some data flow analysis, some optimization, some code generation. Of course, it's simplified. But what we're going to focus on here is uh, data flow analysis and how to express that in a, in a nice and concise way. So for Flowspec, we had a number of uh, language design principles. So at first, we want a declarative language that focuses on what and not how. No more operational specification. Secondly, uh, we're going for a domain-specific language where we can use linguistic abstraction for a domain of data flow analysis. And third, we want it to be a multi-purpose specification language where you can get multiple things out of the specification. So to do that, we want to minimize the expressive power to just what we need and so that we can more easily analyze these specifications and get multiple things out of it. For example, we might get error messages out of it if we specify the static semantics, a uh, part of the static semantics of the language, or we might get information out of it to use in optimizations, or even try to make a connection with the dynamic semantics and prove that they're consistent. So to give you a high level overview, we start out with an abstract syntax tree. We go to a control flow graph, and then we get multiple data flow properties out of that. And Flowspec um, does both control and data flow analysis, and it's really the, the arrows over here um, that's the Flowspec specification. So let's start with a simple example program. Here we have some assignments, an if then else, uh, a while loop. And on the right hand side, I'll add some flow spec rules, which will map the uh, AST of this program to a control flow graph. So let's start with the root rule, which matches a root of the AST and a variable s in there. And it defines that we have a start and an end. And in between, we have a sub control flow graph of s. So we add these start and end nodes, and we'll add the edges of the control flow graph later. We also have a rule for assignments, where we capture the entire assignment in variable a. And by using a without CFG in front of it, we're basically saying this AST node is now also a control flow graph node. The entry and exit symbols are, in this case, not really actual nodes, but more of the context in which this uh, this assignment lives. So it's just to relate the control flow graph nodes to the rest of the control flow graph. So these are the assignments. Now we have a couple of sequences of assignments where we have two sub uh, substatements, uh, sub which are also sub control flow graphs and are in a linear fashion defined, which gives us these edges over there. Then we have a control flow graph rule for if then else, which is a condition, a then and, and, a, and an else branch. From the entry, we can go to the condition, and the condition is again a node. So there's the node, and there's the arrow from the entry to the condition. Then from the condition, we can go into the control flow graphs of the then and the else branch. And from the then and the else branch, we can go to the exit. Finally, we have a while loop, which is similar. We have a condition and a body. And in this case, we can define it in one big chain from the entry to the condition, then to the body, from the body back, and then from the condition to the exit. So this is the mapping from uh, abstract syntax tree to control flow graph. Here we have a simple straight line program with a slightly 
more interesting control flow graph, which also goes into the expressions. And I'll show you in a minute why that's interesting. Um, we're going to define live variables analysis. So live variables analysis says if a variable is live, uh, then the current uh, value of the variable may be read further along in the program. So we define a property, a data flow property. We call it live. We give it a, a type, which is a set of names. And I really mean name here. So I want to separate out the concern of name binding of the language and assume that it's already there and then just talk about the names instead of strings. So at the end of the program, no variables should be live. And here's the general propagation rule. We match on anything and the, and the next control flow graph node. And we say that for that anything, the live variables should be the live variables of the next node. If we have just these two rules, then we get the empty set everywhere. Now we add more rules. So for example, here's a rule for, the, uh, for a node that is a reference. So this is why we're going into the expression so that we can have a separate rule for references. So for a reference n, in context of a next node, we take the live variables of the next node and we add with the union operation uh, a singleton set with the extra name. So that name becomes live. And the effect of that is that after this uh, reference, z becomes live. After this reference, x becomes live. And that gets propagated upward. But of course, this isn't the live variables yet. We're missing one more. That's for the assignment. So for the assignment, uh, we match the name that's being assigned. And again, the next node. We take uh, the live variables from the next node, and we filter out the name that's being assigned here. And what we get then is something very simple, where z is live in between here, and x is live in between here, and x and y over here are apparently dead code. They're not being used at all. So let's take a slightly more interesting example. So now I've added an if-then-else over here. And mostly we're talking about the same thing, but with the if-then-else, you have these splits and merges in control flow. So what happens with the split? Well, in principle, we can just propagate the information to both of the branches and get the x and the y over here. So z was live, but it's being assigned in both branches, so it's removed whereas y and x are references, so those are the two live variables in the different branches. But we also have this merge point in the control flow graph. And for the merge point, which rule should, should we do first? And does one override the other? Well, that is where I'll show you the last part that I've been hiding of the uh, specification, which is over here. I've now added that this is a may set. So it's not just a set, it's a lattice. And the lattice uh, that we defined over here with the may set um, gives a least upper bound uh, operator in the form of a union. And this is what we use when we find merge points in the control flow graph. So just with choosing the lattice, we choose the behavior at merge points. And in this case, that would be a union giving you x and y are live over there. So we can show you the same with available expressions. I'll go over it a little bit more quickly. This is a must set. That means that the analysis will do an intersection. Um, an available expression, um, an expression becomes available once you've executed it and will become unavailable once one of the variables inside of the expression is redefined. So as you can see, as we go over the program, uh, the addition becomes available, then the multiplication also becomes available. We propagate that into the loop. Uh, we find the assignment of A, so 
we lose all of the available expressions. We find the addition again. And now there's a back edge uh, back towards the, the start of the, uh, the loop. Therefore, we need to do a union between this set and that set. And so we find out that, in fact, the multiplication should not be available here because we don't have it at the end of the loop. We only have it at the start, just before the loop. Just to show you that these uh, specifications are still short for, uh, for other uh, analyses, this is uh, reaching definitions. And this is very busy expressions, so it's also quite nice and short. So the semantics of, of this language is based on an older framework. It's a monoton framework. It was originally uh, defined by, uh, by Kildall in, in 73, and uh, Kevin Ullman extended it in 77. It's a lattice theoretic framework uh, where the data flow domain should form a complete lattice with a finite height. The finite height part is for uh, um, damn it, I'm lost word. Never mind. Uh, the, the data flow rules should form uh, monotone increasing functions, and then the desired data flow information is the least fixed point. Um, if you iteratively calculate the least fixed point, then you can guarantee termination by uh, requiring that finite height of the lattice. That's what I was looking for. Um, I won't go into the details of this, but basically if you have a, uh, if you have a flow spec source file, then the implementation uh, takes out the transfer functions, uh, the control flow graph construction code, um, and the mapping between control flow graph nodes and transfer functions. If you then add uh, a source file from the object language to analyze, then you can build the control flow graph, and you can use this iterative least fixed point solver which we'll call into the interpreter of the transfer functions. Um, we have some future work, or limitations, however you want to call it. Um, some future work that I'm interested in is leveraging the name binding information more. So we are, we're already using it to, to simplify uh, the specification of life variables where we really talk about names. Um, but we could also use it to uh, find out where labeled jumps are coming from to support that in the control flow. And something that we found uh, during the case study, which you can find in the paper, is that sometimes you want to do something with the information when the information is about names and the names go out of scope. So where control flow crosses scope boundaries, you may want to do something uh, as well. Um, I mentioned a number of properties that the, that the framework requires, like correct lattices and monotonicity of, of transfer functions. I don't actually check that yet. So that's also something that should probably be added. Um, I'd like to try to find a way to do language agnostic analysis specifications, because if, the, if you take two languages that are pretty close to each other and you compare the flow spec specifications of, of the same analysis, then they're basically identical. So it seems like we should be able to extract something that's language agnostic or maybe language parametric. Finally, um, what I mentioned before, it would be very nice to have a dynamic semantic specification and a specification of a data flow analysis in, in flow spec and be able to verify that these are consistent. So that's it. That's flow back in a nutshell.